Hi guys, welcome back to Sadducee. Uh, Sans Route Part 27 of who knows how many more. There you go. Sorry. Um, the Theban servant ran off, but as soon as he passed the pillar, I was hiding behind along with the commander vanished into thin air. Well, what the? What happened? I didn't get the time to try to figure it out that out when a demon who looked around my age walked into the room reading a book. Is that... Priest Trow, your nose is stuck in those books. Will you not lift your head up from them once in a while? Huh? That voice. I circled around the pillar to see a second demon leaning against the pillar uh, and smirking at Priest Trow. Aren't you supposed to be with your mother practicing the harpsichord? I am. But I had a feeling that you were in danger. In danger? What are you- ATTACK! All of a sudden, three shadows that cleared the room and slammed into Ray's drop, forcing him to fall to the ground and drop his book. At the sight, uh, the sight cleared for me, there were three other demons in a dog pile with Ray's drop bottom. Hit? Ah! No way! You haven't had a break in months from those stupid books! It's time for PUNISHMENT! DEATH BY BROTHERHOOD! No more reading! I told you that you were in danger. I suddenly knew who these demons were. It's the boys. Even in the demon world, their brotherly connection was astounding. They were merely younger versions of themselves. One of the demons, who I assumed was Matthew, grabbed the book from the floor and opened it, reading mockingly. Reading it mockingly. How can you read this, Race Jero? It's all about war strategy! It's boring! I have to, Zakaro! Get off! There's only one thing you need to know about strategy. Kill them all. Take no prisoners. You sound just like father. <laughs> I couldn't help but giggle. It was cute to see them acting childish well, with each other. Eventually, James managed to push his brothers off of him and stand brushing himself off. You all are reckless. At least we have fun. It's true. You haven't been with us in weeks. Don't you think it's time for a break? I'm sure father won't mind, but I have to- I know you want to, Raistrao. Damn it. I... What is going on here? I shot my head to the voice to see the commander age a little, staring back at the boys with his arms across his chest. Damien quickly dashed and hid behind Sam, peeking over his shoulder to see the large commander. Nothing is going on. We just passed by each other. Then why does your brother have your book? I was showing him what I was learning, Father. Return to your studies, Ray Strau. The rest of you out of my sight. Do not disturb your brother again. I could only stare as James gently took his book and, without looking at his brothers, returned to reading. The commander walked past the remaining brothers, growling at Sam and Damien before leaving the room. What was up with that? Don't worry about it. We'll find a way to get him back. I don't know. He's on a very tight leash. Hmm. Ezra, you're quiet. What did you hear? He's going to a negotiation meeting. He's going to arrange a marriage. A marriage? For who? It must be for one of us. He hasn't decided who will marry her. It's a girl from a kingdom he wants to take over. But that's uncharacteristic of him. Usually he'd just attack with the army. Whatever the case is, one of us is getting married. I hope it isn't me. What about Ray Strau? He's the eldest. It would make sense, but having a succubus marrying one of us means that she'll be practically married to all of us. Well, what should we do? Before the conversation could continue, the boys vanished into thin air, fading into different colored mists. Replacing them was an older Damien and Matthew sitting with each other in the middle of the throne room. Do you think we should? I really want to. I want to as well. Still, it'll be hard to convince Raistero, since he's the one about to be married, and he's the favorite. We don't know that, Zakeru. Maybe she's set to marry you. No way! I don't want to get married! I don't think you'll have a problem with that baby face of yours. I looked over to see Sam join the duo, crossing his arms, raising an eyebrow at his brothers. What are you two talking about? We got into contact with the human world again. Come on, Ezreal. You give humans too much attention. No way! You gotta listen! 
They apparently have stores and books and schools and stuff. So what? It's full of humans who piss on each other for no reason. They're no better than the devil spawn. Nuh-uh, the one we were talking to wasn't like that. How do you know, Sekeru? Because I do! What is going on here? They want to go to the human world. The human world? Reishiro, think about it. You won't have to marry that girl and be the heir anymore. You could be with us, and we can make lives for ourselves in the new world. Now you're just talking nonsense. Whoa. I vote that we do it. Huh? Oh, not you two. Think about it. This may be our chance to finally get away from this political nonsense we're stuck in. We may be nobles, but we're still our own beings. <sighs> Ristro is in. What? Azrael! Whoa! So how do we get there? Are you kidding me? You don't even know how we'd get there. A simple spell should work, but it would require someone from the human world to help us get there. We can ask him! Oh, he'd definitely help us. I'm... I'm not so sure about... Reistra, aren't you tired of pleasing father all of the time? I am, but... If you stay, you'll be married off and become ruler of father's kingdom. You'll have no time for yourself or with us, and you'll be constantly at war with the other realms for power. You'll most likely turn into the spitting image of father. <laughs> What he's saying is, get your head out of your ass and let's go. If you don't say yes, I'll drag your princely ass with us. I don't care what that bastard of a father wants. Come on, Reistero! All right, let's do this. What's the plan? I couldn't believe it was happening. I was seeing the entire process of their life before my eyes. They were nobles, and James was the heir to the kingdom that Commander ruled. Even more so, he was going to be married to Diana. They sacrificed everything to leave and be together. They'd rather be free versus being their, in their noble roles. I started to feel a little jealous. They were able to leave while I was still expected to do what my father wanted me to be. How they were able to leave was uncertain still, but I knew I would learn in time. I closed my eyes and mentally asked Damien to end the vision. As soon as I asked, the world around me slowly vanished, and I was brought back to the bedroom where I was sat with my head nestled in Damien's hands. My vision began to clear, letting me fully see the boys around me, all with concerned faces. So, you now know exactly who we are. Diana, is the girl you were, you were arranged to marry? Not anymore. Once we left, the arrangement was broken. With no sons to marry off, her dad couldn't go through with the marriage deal. If Diana is here for us, that means she's trying to save her kingdom from being attacked. That's not true. She wants to rule our kingdom. Having one of us will give her the right to our kingdom, as much as we'd have right over hers. So she's a gold digger! Well, with a kingdom like ours, what succubus wouldn't want to marry us for it? It all made sense. She wanted them to finally take over an opposing kingdom. She knew that, despite her power, she wouldn't be able to fight versus their father, so she had to find another way in. That manipulative... Before I could continue, I felt my head be suddenly get heavy and dizzy. I gripped my head, kneeling under my breath. Oh, what the... I took too much. Uh, I'm so sorry. Rest now. There's no need to do anything more today. Uh-oh. I wonder if I accidentally did something to my game because I keep saying these little fuzzies. The, sun, the voice suddenly rushed over and helped me lay back as my vision was painted in white polka dots. I needed to sleep badly. Instantly, I closed my eyes and let darkness consume me. After what seemed hours, I finally woke up, slightly refreshed. My body knew that if I slept any longer, I'd be up all night, which is not part of the plan of the day. I rubbed my eyes and sat up, letting a soft groan escape my lips. In response, something be beside my bed shuffled, causing me to look over. I didn't know what I was expecting. Beside me, sitting in a chair beside the bed, was Sam, rousing himself to see me awake. I smiled at him, seeing his slightly ruffled hair and tired eyes. <clears throat> oh, you're awake. How do you feel? Fine. Sam nodded before he looked down at the bed, leaning over to stare at the blanket. I'm such an idiot. 
If I was stronger, you wouldn't be like this. Sam, it's not your fault. No, it's my fault. It's our fault. Look at you. You're in bed, again. After us using our powers, again. And you're a target, again, because of us. <sighs> we never should have come. This is an interesting dialogue. I quickly reached over and put my fingers on his lips, stopping him from going any further. I didn't want to hear anymore. Sam, it's okay. I wanted to help you out. I offered to let you all stay. Nothing is your fault. I gently moved my hand and cupped Sam's cheek, staring at him with concern. I didn't want him to hold the guilt in his mind about this whole ordeal. Diana was desperate, and she'd hunt anyone for them. It wasn't his fault she was desperate enough to hunt them down. Sam looked at me, defeated in my hand, before he closed his eyes and let out a sigh. However, I grew cu uh, curious. So, Sam, you're a noble? Sam opened his eyes to look at me. He didn't seem angry, but he had a coldness in his voice as he spoke. I was a noble. I'm not a noble anymore. Not anymore? I was the third son of the Demon Lord. My brothers and I lived together in the castle as nobility. But since James was the oldest, James became royalty and was heir to the throne. The whole situation became one gigantic boring mess. So we all grouped together and left to come here. Once that happened, we surely lost the chance to ever get forgiveness. What was it like while you were there? Like I said, one gigantic boring mess. Eric, Matthew, and I were as replacements in case James fucked up. Since Eric was before me and since my dad was a dickbag, I wasn't ever likely to get the throne. So I spent my days lazing about and not giving two shits about anything. Not even my mom could control me. Your mom? Yeah. She's not like my asshole of a dad. She was actually caring and kind, but was a pushover. Sam let out a small laugh. I could tell he was getting nostalgic. She always thought I could be more than I was, but my dad definitely made sure I knew my place. In response, I became the rebel's son, hanging out with the commoner demons and such just to piss my dad off. I swear, I'm surprised he didn't kill me out of shame. That's horrible. Sam stared at me as if I had slapped him. He then sighed and ruffled my hair a bit. Don't even worry about it. You need rest. You don't need to know about the demon world. But I want to know more about you. Sam stared at me once again as if I had slapped him. I couldn't tell whether it was pissing him off or pissing him off or intriguing him. He let his hand that was ruffling my hair fall down to the strands of my hair, stopping at my cheek to cradle it. For a strong man, Sam knew how to be soft. <sighs> Sam let out a sigh before unlinking his dog pad from his neck, putting it around mine. I'm warning you, my past is boring. Sam wrapped his fingers gingerly around the dog pad, and I watched as a green mist began to surround his head and the dog pad. The green aura wrapped around the necklace until it snaked around my head, and before I knew it, I was surrounded in green light. When the light had subsided, I was back in the main hall of the demon castle. I looked around, feeling unable to move, but I could practically see everything as clear as I had before. Bring that back! My head shot towards the sudden exclamation where I saw Sam rush into the hall with a quite large basket of bread. No chance in hell, creepo! Sam then did what I only ever saw on TV shows or movies. He stomped his foot on the ground, causing a large boulder to burst out from it before he kicked it towards the entrance he had come from. I could only stare as the boulder didn't demolish the door. It was flying towards, but simply skidded to a stop blocking the entrance. <laughs> That was easy. Sam then turned into the hall, looking around as he walked towards the throne. He took a small roll of bread and stuffed it into his mouth, only able to cover half of it as he, started, as he stared at the seat. I was surprised. Why did Sam steal bread? Why would he steal bread? He was a rebel, yes, but he was a noble. He wouldn't get in trouble for taking food, but he had a basket of bread. Repeated like three times. Sam chewed and swallowed the bread as it started consuming. He started consuming inside. Fucking asshole, piece of shit, parrot. At least you have your folks. Kaku. Ooh, interesting. I turned to see another demon step out from behind a pillar towards Sam. Sam smirked at him and tossed him the basket of bread. Think that's enough for you and your brother? 
More than enough. This means a lot, man. Don't mention it, Gaku. I like his wings. Gaku smiled and held out a hand to Sam, who took it and shook it. We owe you for this. You don't owe me jack shit. Now get going before you get caught. Gaku nodded. However, Gaku quickly got out a dog tag from his trench coat and held it out for Sam. Sam stared before reaching out and taking it. What is this? A gift. A human world trinket. I know you and your brothers have been interested in it. Maybe this might bring you closer to it. Sam stared before looking down at the gift. It was glimmering silver, almost entrancing Sam's gaze. As Sam looked back up, Gaku lifted off to the ground and flew out an open window in the almost sickly purple sky. The human world. Sam looked back at the trinket before wrapping it with his green magic. Like I can get any closer. Sam tossed the trinket into the air, letting it vanish into an unknown oblivion. I smiled a bit at the sight, knowing the future of that point. What surprised me was the green orb slowly floating towards Sam, wrapped in a purple-like aura. Sam didn't even turn around, but spoke as if he knew. What do you want, Mom? Mom? How was that orb his mother? The orb simply floated into place as Sam turned it with an almost angry glare. Yes, I stole that bread and gave it to the commoner, all right? Don't judge me. Once again, Sam was not responded to, at least not from what I heard. Sam clicked his teeth and crossed his arms peeped. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Telepathically speaking to each other. Well, she is. The orb then floated over to Sam and lightly brushed his cheek before flying off, disappearing into the air. Sam sighed, rolling his shoulders. I need to get out of here. He looked like he was he had a lot on his mind, but his closed mouth wouldn't let him speak them. However, none could question his irritation. Eventually, Sam stopped the magic, taking the dog tag off of me and holding it in his hands before looking to me. What did I tell you? Boring. You helped that demon get food. I was a rebel breaking rules. We're not supposed to care for common demons. We're supposed to let them die out if they don't have the ability to take care of themselves. Sam gritted his teeth and let out an aggravated sigh. Whatever. I'm not there anymore. I'm here. Sam. Look. I'm sorry. I stared, my mind blank. Mind going blank. What was he apologizing for? Sam stared down at the blankets again. You've done a lot for me and my brothers. Sheltering us, letting us continue to live here. It may not seem like much, but for us, it means everything. Especially after everything that's happened to you with that Hellspawn Malik and Diana being crazy. I don't think we'll ever be able to repay you for what you've done. I watched his speechless silence as Sam lifted his head, his eyes full of almost hopelessness. Thank you. Sam lowered his head and gently, almost as if I was fragile, placed his hand over my hand. I couldn't help but feel my heart squeeze within my chest at the sight. He truly cared. Sam let out a small sigh before looking to me, removing his hand from mine. Now get some sleep. You still need rest. We'll wake you up when dinner is done. Sam gently pressed me back and down into the bed, resolved in what had happened. I couldn't let him leave without doing something. I quickly pulled Sam down to me, lifted my head and gently kissed him softly, laying a hand on his cheek to keep his face and close. Sam stared in deep surprise before hesitantly kissing me back, caressing my cheek and slightly melting at the touch of our lips. <laughs> he doesn't look like he enjoyed that. He has like a eh, confused look on his face. A soft sigh escaped his lips before he slowly pulled away with a smile. He gently licked his lips, making me go red in the face at the simple gesture. He let a satisfied sigh before running a hand through my hair. Sleep, doofus. And with that, he stood up and left the room, leaving me to rest as per his request. I smiled to myself before relaxing into the mattress. <laughs> I'm so done with you, Diana. I suddenly tensed up. I felt majorly uneasy. Something wasn't right. I felt it in my core. She must be here. The thought of her in the house infuriated me beyond belief. I had to make sure she wasn't... not here. I rolled out of bed and quickly left my room, wandering the halls and listening closely. She was a demon, but I was listening very intently. There is no way she would be able to sneak up on me. I know you're here. Where are you? I could feel myself growl. I wasn't a matter of fear that she had taken away the 
boys anymore. Her very existence sent a little fire of rage within my gut, which only grew as each day went by. This feud was getting on my nerves, and I knew it would not end well for one of us. I wasn't going to lose to that demon bitch. What the fuck do you want? My heart stopped. Diana was with Sam. My mind flew into slow motion, playing fake images of Cyan Diana trying to seduce Sam in my head to further fan the angry flame inside of me. I instinctively followed Sam's voice. I was approaching the grand lobby. I hid myself behind the corner of the hall, peeking into the space and down at the scene. I peeked in to see Sam by the foot of the stairs with Diana sitting on the railing, looking to him. My, my, such a brute. Didn't your mother teach you how to treat a woman? She isn't here, and frankly, you shouldn't be either. Ah, I'm hurt. Wounded, truly. <laughs> like I care, you crazy bitch. Pity. And here I thought I was going to offer you the chance to become something better than just a simple incubus. What was Diana going on about? More than just an incubus? She was insane! Like you got anything I care about. How about becoming the next demon lord? Pretty sure he doesn't care about that. At Rose. What did she mean? Becoming the next demon lord? The boys weren't in the demon world anymore. They had no claim to the throne anymore. Sam stared at Diana, which made me worried. You're bluffing. Well, currently, I'm the contracted bride to the heir to the throne. Since the throne is open, it's available to any son of the Demon Lord's line. Think about it. You'll gain the throne, the land, and a bride to continue your lineage with. Doesn't that sound like a perfect life for an incubus like you? How dare this girl try to convince Sam to return to the demon world? He ran away from it. He didn't have to go back. He shouldn't have to go back. Eh. My mind began to wander, imagining him saying yes. He would leave, and his brother would follow to bring him back. They'd be trapped because Diana would make sure they could never leave. Sam would be the new lord with Diana as, he, as, his, as his queen, and I'd lose him. I don't know. You must be crazier than I thought. Yeah. What? I felt surprise run down my body again. Did I hear Sam correctly? He denied her? You dare deny! Whoa. All of a sudden, Sam's body disappeared as well as Diana's. I blinked and saw Sam grip Diana by the neck, pinning her body to the wall near the dining room archway. Her feet couldn't even touch the floor, and I felt myself unconsciously rub my neck at the sight. For once in your life, shut your fucking mouth! I could see Sam's muscles tense and flex at holding Diana. You do not scare me. I could bring you to your knees and make you beg to return with me on a chain leash. Then do it! I want to see you try to chain me! Sam glared at Diana. As Diana stared back in almost fear of me, I expectantly heard her actually do it. I expected her act. I, ugh, I can't speak. Okay, Sam glared at Diana. Okay, Sam glared as Diana stared almost in fear of him. I expected her to actually do it. However, as a small breath of the moment, Sam spurred me. <laughs> Called it. Sam then released Diana, letting her body fall to the floor. Diana gripped her neck, coughing for air, as Sam stepped back, glaring at her. You're out of power. You've been running without recharging, and now you're on your last life. Shut up! Diana glared and stood up, flipping her hair back in an almost unnaturally sexy style. Huh. <laughs> That's cheap. See first? Okay. What's stopping me from taking your little human's energy? You go anywhere near her again and I will rip you apart. <laughs> the human girl? You must be joking. A human like her can't possibly provide you what you need. She is a human. You're a demon. I let the urge I felt the urge to storm in and shut her mouth. It would only give women position, but I was growing extremely tired of Diana. Barge in and set her straight. I decided to be assertive and quickly stepped into the room, rushing down the steps to be in front of Sam. Diana and Sam looked at me in surprise as I glared daggers at Diana. Get out. Well, well, little human. You're awfully nosy in business that doesn't concern you. It does concern me. <laughs> does it? 
I don't think a human would understand the importance of this affair. You're asking me to... You're asking him to leave to be someone he doesn't want to be. That's not going to happen. Oh? And what makes you so sure about that? I love him. Diana stared in shock at my exclamation. Was it not what she expected? I didn't care what she expected. I wasn't going to lose a man I had grown to love. You... love him? Yes, I love him. Diana's lips twitched, the edge curling into an amused smirk as she stared at me. So what? A human's love isn't enough to understand the situation. A demon can never reciprocate human feeling. To both of our surprise, however, Sam stepped forward and put an arm around me, pulling me close to his body. I love her. I saw the confidence Diana had shatter in her eyes as she stared at Sam as his words. At his words, I could see the struggle in her face to try and find some weakness in Sam. In me. Anything. A demon love a human? Impossible. Are you deaf? I said I love her. You don't have the brains to understand what love is. It's not just a human emotion. Demons like us can feel it too. You just have your head so far up your ass that you refuse to see it. Just like how you refuse to see that you've lost. Diana took a step back, physically feeling the sting of Sam's words in her chest. She had lost. I could see it in her eyes. Diana's eyes grew dull as she glared at me and Sam. It seemed almost uncharacteristic of her, yet it was something I wasn't surprised to see come from her face. Very well. Fine. Vale. And with that, Diana faded into the ground into a purple pentagram, crossing her arms and almost upset. Almost looking upset. Sam and I were left alone. I left, uh, left with the silence of the room. I finally let out the air I was unconsciously holding in my chest, relaxing from the ordeal. Sam stepped to me and held me gently, surprising me. You all right? I nodded in response, unable to speak so immediately after being surprised. Sam let out a sigh, relaxing into the embrace. I gently placed my hands around him, returning the embrace slightly. I could hear Sam's heartbeat. He held me close in his arms, and I felt safe beyond words. Thank you for defending me. There's no way I'd let her hurt the one I love. I looked up at Sam, surprised at what he had said. Sam blushed, losing a strand of my hair from my face to look down at me. I'm an asshole, yeah. Do I deserve to like you? No. I don't deserve to be holding you now, but... You... I just... I love you, okay? I love you. I stared wide-eyed, flushing like a maniac. Was this real? No way, this couldn't be real. Was Sam confessing to me? Confessing his love for me? Sam gently caressed my cheek, staring into my eyes with a loving, almost hopeful expression. The warmth of his hand inviting me to nuzzle into it, and I closed my eyes. This wasn't a dream. My heart was pounding to the point where I was sure Sam could hear it. Sam gently leaned in, closing his eyes. He stopped, however, remaining just a mere torturous inch away from my lips. He wanted me to show my feelings for him. He had left himself open for me to kiss him or leave empty. The power I had was unbelievable. I loved him and I wanted to give him exactly what he wanted. I gently leaned in, letting my lips finally touch his gingerly. Sam let out an almost surprised gasp, pulling against my lips before wrapping both of his arms against my waist and pulling me close to him. I moved my arms up and around his neck, feeling the kiss between us dip into a heated heat height. Eh. My chest was pounding, making me feel and see fireworks in my mind. Sam was everything I desired. He was the man I wanted, demon or not. It was all supernatural to fall in love with someone so quickly. Maybe it was a sense of magic I was thrown into. Maybe it was Cupid playing with my heart. Either way, I found myself melting at the thought of him being with me. I felt myself combing my fingers through Sam's hair, making the man holding me softly tremble at my touch. He gently nibbled on my lower lip, asking me to deepen the kiss between us even further. I easily teased him before finally opening my mouth slightly for him. His tongue gently danced with mine as one of his hands slid up my back and cradled my head. He gently leaned my body back, making me cling to him as the heat of our kiss rose higher and higher. Gently, though, Sam slowed the kiss down and pulled away, staring down at me. His eyes burned for me, wanting me to melt and buckle in his arms. I could feel myself almost melt my I could feel myself all melt already. Eh. Sam opened his mouth to speak, but as a very small bush ran across his cheeks, he was reduced to shy silence. I stared 
as he tried to find the words to say in my eyes. I knew exactly what he wanted. Didn't need energy, though, right? Are you... No, I just... I stared wide-eyed, feeling a blush on my cheeks grow. He didn't say any more, but I knew what words would have followed if he continued. He wanted me. I was stunned. Was I that appealing to him? Was his passion really that deep for me? Sam gently nuzzled my forehead, losing the blush and finally being able to speak. If you don't want to, we don't have to. I mean, it's up to you. I could feel my mind go numb and purr at the idea. A moment with an incubus, he was a demon of sex, the purest form of lust and desire. My world would rock, and I would enjoy every second of it. At the same time, I was indeed inexperienced. Diana wasn't wrong when she claimed to me to be innocent. Did I want to give that innocence to him, especially this early? I found myself forgetting the words yes and no. What could I say to him? I knew then what I wanted, but how to say it without breaking the moment. Hold me. Deuce me will probably come in a separate video with all the other guys when I'm done with this. If I ever get done with this. I wasn't ready, but I still wanted to give him the love he wanted. Holding me close was all I needed, all I wanted. Part of me grew fearful of what Sam would think. Now I'm speak speaking all weird. Would he hate me? Would he regret giving me his love? So many stories ended when sex wasn't given, and I didn't want this story to end. Sam, however, smiled and caressed my cheek happily in response, nodding in understanding. I could tell that he was okay with my decision, which made my heart flutter in joy. Sam gently leaned in and kissed my lips once again, wanting both of us to cool down from our passionate mind. I kissed back sweetly, feeling the heat of my chest die out painfully. Sam pulled away slowly, looking into my eyes to reveal a deep love that haunted his green irises. All right, let's get you back to bed. Sam then wrapped an arm around my shoulders and lowered his other arm underneath my knees. I easily held on to him as he lifted me up like a blushing bride and carried me to the room towards me. Towards my room. Sam was kind enough to know my limits, and I trusted him to respect my choice. He wouldn't enthrall me to go against my wishes, nor would he force himself on me. He was perfect. Sam gently lowered me to his, my bed before petting my head with a loving smile. I was beaming in happiness. I didn't want it to end. As Sam turned to leave, I quickly grabbed his arm. Wait! Sam froze and looked back at me, awaiting my next command. He was going to obey no matter what I said. But he was anticipating what I was going to ask. I could see it in his eyes. Clover, I just wanted him to be with me a little longer. I didn't want us alone. Hold me. I repeated my words, holding another meaning to these two words. Was he okay with what I wanted? It was so close to what he had asked for, but it wasn't going beyond what I desired. Sam took in my words and smiled, nodding before turning back to me and sliding into bed with me. I was surprised, but I happily melted into Sam's arms as they wrapped themselves around my body. I rested my head against Sam's chest, enjoying the warmth it provided as I closed my eyes. He truly loved me as I loved him. My rest with him was as peaceful as it could be, the best sleep I had in days. When I opened my eyes, I felt Sam still holding me, but he had fallen asleep. His sleeping face made me giggle softly, but the reality of the situation made my heart flutter. I couldn't believe it. I was laying next to a man I had grown to love with all of my heart. His warm embrace made me feel safe as our heated dance were played in my head. I couldn't help but smile and snuggle into his chest further. Unconsciously, he held me tighter to his body, with giving me more of his warmth. I didn't want to move, but then my core suddenly tightened, making me sit up without waking the man next to me. I felt my legs move, bring me to my balcony window, where I opened the glass and stepped out onto the patio. I stared wide at Diana, who sat cross-legged on the railings of my balcony, with her glowing red eyes stared upon me. I opened my mouth to object, but Diana stopped me. Before you get all huffy, I didn't come here to take your precious man away. I will admit, though, I'm shocked that you didn't give your innocence to him. We demons are the best lovers, you know. I glared. What do you want, Diana? Well, I just wanted to see how you truly feel. You know, without him around to influence you. What are you talking about? I'm giving you an opportunity to come clean about these feelings of yours, and to give you your salvation. What was Diana up to? This is beyond crazy. Nothing she had done made sense. <sighs> 
why was I still alive at this rate? What's keeping me from killing me and taking them out? Okay. <laughs> you are not worth my time. Not worth your time? What are you afraid something might happen? All at once, I felt my body being lifted into the air and moved past over the railings, leaving me with nothing but the ground below to threaten me with a collision death. Oh, trust me, dear. I'm not afraid to kill you. I can drop you right now and leave your body to rot until the morning, when the boys would find you. I wanted to speak, but the thought of her letting go and letting me fall to my death scared my voice into silence. The end of them chuckled and pulled my body back to the balcony, sending me down. Alas, if I kill you, then the boys would never come with me willingly back to the demon world, and then I'd have to chase them all around the world, or kill them and drag them back. But then their father wouldn't be happy, and blah blah blah. Too much work. Diana seemed very business-oriented, as if the boys were cargo more than men. It irked me, but she then smiled. I'm giving you one chance to denounce your love for the demon in your bed. And let me take him and the other boys back to the demon world. And why, may I ask, would I do that? There are so many reasons why, actually. There's the reason that he's a demon and you're a human, so you two can never truly have a happily ever after. Then there's the reason that demons truly do not know how to love, despite what he may proclaim. The list goes on and on. The point is, if you give me the boys, I will promise you eternal happiness. Eternal happiness? That's right. I have the power to give you anything you desire. Power. Men. Women. Money. Fame. Name it, and it's yours. A demon never goes back on their word, and I have the power to obtain anything you wish. Our deal is our contract. I could only stare in shock. This was a dream. It had to be. However, Diana smiled an almost genuine smile at me, shaking me with reality of the situation. She would never smile like that. Don't you wish to be free of your destiny? Your father constantly berating you to become the next CEO of your grandfather's company. H how did you... I was almost bored and surprised. How did Diana know all about this? Was she a sucky... Well, she was a sucky bus, yes, but how could she know anything beyond sexual desire? She wasn't dating. Janet chuckled and leaned back against her arms. Just because I play with hearts and sex doesn't mean I don't know my way around the human mind. You happen to be an open book of information, but I digress. Yeah, just Google search. I can give you your freedom with ease. It'll be like you were always meant to have it. All I ask is that you hand over the boys. What do you say? Was I seriously being given this choice? The man I loved for anything I wanted, a demon like Dana was powerful enough, yes, but did I even want to consider giving up the man I loved? No. She must have been crazier than I thought, I glared. Absolutely not. Dinah sighed and stood up onto the railing. What I wasn't expecting was her lifting me into the air. I tried to scream, but my voice suddenly became locked in silence. What was Diana doing? Diana made me float over her and she smirked as we touched noses. Well, if I can't return home with the boys, I might as well return home with the power to fight back. Diana finally leaned in and kissed me. I shut my eyes, feeling the need to fight her lips, but finding no muscles in my face, listening to my mental commands. What did she do to me? I didn't want to enjoy it, but every single nerve in my body was flaring in excitement and pleasure as she kissed me. I felt my energy drain slowly, but forced it into my body. Was she using her magic to force energy out of, me, out of my body? like forever, but finally Diana pulled away from the kiss with a smile and looked her lips. She lowered me back to the patio and chuckled. For some strange reason, even though some, nothing seemed to have changed, she looked stronger, powerful. It was almost like looking at a new Diana. Diana then stepped back off the railing, making me catch my breath into my throat. As she took another step away from me, she looked to be simply walking on into my air. Diana smirked at my surprise. May you never regret your choice, human. If you do, I'll happily come and take it away. With a flick of her hair, Diana turned and walked away into the night, fading into the darkness like a shadow. I watched her fade away before I could, before looking back to the man in my bed. Did I make the right choice? My heart gave a gentle thump, giving me my answer.
I did, and I will never regret this for as long as I live. I walked back and said, and gently crawled back into bed with them, the embrace of the safest arms I knew. I snuggled close to the warmth before closing my eyes. I was happy. The rest of the story can almost be passed over. With Diana gone, my life returned to normal with school and my friends not remembering what had happened. It was as if magic never even appeared in my world. One thing was for certain, however. Sam loved me, and I loved him just as much. We had promised our lives to each other, and nothing was going to take that away from us. Not even time itself. Our love was so powerful, it practically overwhelmed me with joy every time I found him cuddling me close every morning. To think, a demon in love with a human like me. It was unthinkable. Unbelievable. It was practically impossible. But it was true. The other boys decided to leave on their own accord. They knew that my future would only need Sam at my side, so they each decided to start their own lives in the human world. Sam understood perfectly, wishing his brothers the best. Besides, Sam had someone new to care for. His brother didn't need to worry about him now that he was caring for me. That still sounds really selfish. I felt bad as well for being closer to Sam than the others, but they assured me that I was okay that they would remain nearby should I ever need them. I was happy for that. They made me promise, however, that I would love Sam for as long as we lived. That promise was instantly given. But what of my future? Well, it was kind of made for me. Before I graduated, James decided to step into the light of the Anderson Toys Company, and with the help of his demon powers and leadership charisma, he managed to influence not only the entire board, but my father as well into letting him run for CEO. I was beyond shocked. How James managed to do all of that was beyond me, but when the vote was called, James had taken over the company I was destined to have. He vowed to keep to the wishes for the, of the late CEO and help me with the company become an even grander company. Eh? For a demon, it was simple to make a company grand. My grandfather would have been proud to see how James helped it shine. With the CEO position filled, my father had no choice but to let me decide my future, which made me happy beyond compare. No longer would I have the future staring me into a corner. I could choose my life on my own. That being said, I was still scared of where the future was going to take me. What did I want to do? Did I want to help James build the company? Did I want to venture off on my own? Sam reassured me that he would support me and help me whatever I decided to do. I was grateful and would never forget that promise. I was happy and nothing could shake me down from the happiness. One afternoon, a good couple years after the boys and I had met, I had a moment to myself. So I wandered my house and took in all that had happened as if it was all a dream. The demons, the devils, the magic, it was all surreal to believe. It almost frightened me to think that it could have been all a dream. But the warm feeling in my heart reminded me that it was all real. The demons, the magic, the love I had, all real. I smiled as I held my hands to my chest, relishing to, in the feelings dancing within my soul. I let out a happy sigh before looking up and seeing where I had wandered to. I realized that I was standing in the hallway near my bedroom. I guess I didn't wander far. Jeez, how the hell did I end up here? Well, I should probably turn up the... Which one? Preferences. I can hardly hear. Just a little bit. I stopped at the sound of Sam's voice. It sounded distant, yet it was clear as day. I looked around to land my sights in an open window. He must have been on the roof again. I tiptoed over and listened further. Wanting to know what he had meant. It's been years and I still can't believe I'm here. <laughs> to think I wanted to leave in the first place. I'm such an idiot. I smiled. I quickly remembered when he had first, we had first met. He was my first kiss, after all. <sighs> and I, of course, had the worst first impression ever. Why the hell did I do that? I stifled my giggles. He was thinking of the kiss, too. It was adorable to hear him remember slapping himself. Meh. I guess I can't take back the past. I can only make sure she gets what she deserves from now on. Aww. Huh? I didn't understand. He already gave me everything I wanted. He's practically mine already. What more could he give me? Alright, Sam. No more fuck-ups. I'll call up James and learn how to be a proper man. I need to be strong enough to support her no matter what comes our way. I could not believe it was here. Sam was willing to change for me. I felt both honored and guilty. I didn't want him to change. I loved him for him and no one else. 
I quickly went to the window and stepped up to grab the rooftop. Thank God I had upper body strength. My suddenly hand placement scared Sam. What? What the? H help me, Sam! Sam looked at me in surprise before grabbing my arms and lifting me up to the roof with him. Clever, I landed once again in his lap with his arms around me. What the hell are you doing? And how long were you there? Long enough to hear everything, Sam. I didn't want you to change. I don't... Long enough to hear everything, Sam. I don't want you to change. Sam stared, looking lost at what to say at my words, as I caressed his cheek with a smile. It was true, though. He had faults, sure, but who didn't? I enjoyed his company, and I adored every part of his personality. Sam gently moved his head and buried his hands in my palm. Buried his face in my palm. Closing his eyes and absorbing what I had said, he gently opened his eyes, partially staring past my hand. You do realize that I'm a brute, right? That was my nickname in the Abyssal Plains. I'm a brute. A monster. I'm not what someone can really want. Sam. Sam finally looked to me, a look of hopelessness in his eyes. You're what I want. You're not a brute, and you're not a monster. I gently guided Sam's face down with my hand and kissed him softly, reminding him of my touch and reaffirming my words. He stared at me as if his greatest wish had come true. I fought back a giggle at the sight. Sam gently pulled me to him, hugging me to his chest. I nuzzled into Sam's chest, hearing his gentle heartbeat and memorizing its tempo. You've chained the monster deep inside this sick and sinful body of mine. You know the song? <laughs> Sam chuckled softly at the sound of his laughter, sending happy waves down my spine. Sam smiled down at me and kissed the top of my head. It's your ringtone, doofus. I've practically memorized it. You mean she hasn't changed it in the past three years? I smiled and giggled up at Sam. It was adorable to see him this way. I then felt bold and straightened up to tower Sam a little. Hey, what are you... I simply smiled before kissing Sam's forehead, then gently over his eyelids. Aww. I love you, Sam. Sam held me and closed his eyes. I couldn't tell he didn't... I could tell he didn't want to let me go. I love you too. I didn't want to wake up. This was indeed a dream. I felt light as a feather, no wanting to ever let go of this man in my arms. There were no words that could describe the emotions within me. I felt joy, happiness, ecstatic, high all at once. Here I was, pulling the man I would be with forever, under the beautiful orange sky of the roof of my mansion. I had gained the heart of a demon. No, of a man I loved. I vowed to cherish him and love him for the remainder of my days and beyond. Could a demon love a human forever? I knew Sam would. And that was my happily ever after. And Sam success. Yay! Um, I guess we'll finish this up with his... DLC slash, um, shall we dance thing? Um, yep. Um, I guess thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!